Okay, it's day 71, and as you can see, the sun is blazing right now. It's coming right through the balcony, and it's perfect conditions for my plants. The weather is perfect right now. It's 5.45 p.m., and it's quite warm. So let me do one more demo of taking the solar reflectors away. So that's what it looks like without the solar reflectors. Huge difference. So if the reflectors aren't shining on this, then there's basically very little light coming on the tops of these leaves. So the reflectors are supremely important for the purpose of uh, lengthening the effective day. So the biggest leaf so far has about a width of, I would say, 3.1 inches and th maybe it's about 3.3 inches long. So this most dominant plant also has a tendril coming out. It was a little later than the other ones to form a tendril and I've noticed they kind of just go sideways looking for something to grab onto and then as I showed yesterday they kind of whip around uh, looking for something to bind to. So this is the fourth true leaf from another plant and it looks very interesting. It's almost round as I noted earlier a few days. Uh, a lot of the leaves are acquiring a very round shape perhaps due to my use of these solar reflectors. So they're just sort of concave and round. It's very interesting. Here you see a fifth true leaf developing and perhaps another tendril. So here's one of the two seedlings I transplanted that had its roots broken off and it's doing fine. It must have recovered completely and regenerated its root system. And here you can see the other one. I buried them a little deeper than they normally be, which is probably a good thing because that means uh, not as much of the stem will be sticking out above ground and they'll be more stable. And this plant, the one with the inverted root ball that I also uh, managed a little by burying the whole thing a little deeper in the soil, um, it's doing fine. Okay, it's day 72, and as you can see, everything is looking very robust. I haven't watered for, I think, two or three days now. And the top of the soil is largely dry, although if you look towards the center, uh, well, you can't really see because of the shadows, but the soil is just a little bit moist by coloration, and it seems to be, you know, bone dry everywhere else on the surface. So I started this plant spa transplant, you know, um, last Thursday, and I think it's about time, you know, tomorrow's Thursday, so I should start using this plant spa feature. It's been seven days. But first I just want to talk about some of the other features. But first I just want to talk, but first I want to talk about some of the new developments. This is the longest existing tendril and it's been whipping around all day and it has nothing to grab onto because you know unlike a branch the surface of this pot is large and smooth so I've been wondering will these tendrils whip onto leaves of the same plant or the stems elsewhere and start coiling around them and the answer seems to be no uh, this thing went under this large leaf here and I'm pretty sure while I was away during the day, it's whipped around this uh, stem and some of the petioles and basically nothing stuck. And if you look here at the same plant, it's developing another tendril. Here's a definite success story. This seedling has very dark cotyledons. It's one of the two that had their roots broken after I did two transplants. So after all that brutal transplanting, uh, it looks to be doing fine. And I think a fair bit of that has to do with the fact that I sort of transplanted them by pushing them into the soil. And here's the other seedling. So I don't know if it's going to be able to develop as fast. It's kind of covered by this leaf, but I think it'll get enough sunlight and reflective sunlight from the solar panels to basically do the same thing. And so here I am trying to measure the width of the largest true leaf, and it seems to be maybe 3.25, I don't know, maybe 3.2 inches wide and I would say maybe 3.25 inches long. So what I have here is a large bottle. It's a spray bottle. I removed the top but it's filled with uh, clean water 
And you know, at this point, I don't necessarily have to put distilled water in there because it's a self-distilling system. All the minerals and impurities and pathogens that are in the water will just be, you know, left by evaporation down there. So I guess it depends on whether you want to accumulate a lot of junk down there over time. It's a slow process and these pots are cheap so you can always buy a new one or try to disassemble it and scrape all the debris out. It's up to you. So I'm going to add some water in there. So it's actually not so easy to pour water in there because it's so low, but I managed. Um, I got almost a liter in there. So the water isn't quite up to the level here. You know this is a self-regulating system. If you keep adding water, it's obviously going to flood out of here. And you know I got a few drops on the carpet. But um, anyway, I can add more water in there. It doesn't really matter because as long as you have a sufficient amount of water in there you know the pot will heat up during the day and evaporation will occur so that'll start the whole process if you have more water it'll take longer for you know the distillation process or evaporation to begin and start wetting the soil at the bottom but on the other hand if you have too little water it'll just evaporate very quickly and then run out so now that I've watered down that hole and the tray is filled with water, it's not quite fully full, but you know, at the very full mark, it should last two weeks. So this should last over a week, depending on evaporation rates. I bet it'll last a lot longer because it's not even summer, or maybe not. It's pretty dry here in San Diego. So anyway, the soil on the top is bone dry, and I haven't watered for. I think three days you know we're probably gonna go on four by tomorrow so I don't know I don't have full confidence in just putting water down there because it says on the instructions that I should you know water from the top for the first week before I start doing that so I think I'm gonna add a little bit of water on the surface well maybe not a little bit but uh, quite a bit actually I wanted to make sure I at least feed these seedlings a little bit. And the one with kind of a troubled inverted root ball. As you can see, I just knocked off that seed husk. Okay, so I think that's been a lot of watering. I didn't quite use the whole pot, but I think that in conjunction with the water and the plant spot mechanism in the tray, that should be enough, you know, and I'll just water from the bottom now and follow the instructions as is. Okay, it's day 73. And as you can see, everything's doing fine. The leaves are very green and lush. You know, I did all that watering last night and for this one, you know, the seed husk fell off. For that one, it's still kind of in a ring shape configuration with the seed husk. Uh, nothing has happened yet. And one thing I noticed was uh, the tendrils all kind of fell to the ground as I was, you know, shortly after I was watering. So I don't know if that's a response, you know, from the evolutionary history of this plant just to basically forgo the tendril plan when everything is wet when it's raining and I guess that would make some sense because everything would be somewhat wet and weighed down and lubricated so you want the bonding to other plants and substrates for climbing to be done when it's dry you know that's more stable so here's an example of another tendril that fell down uh, what I had in mind here was this one earlier And there's also this one as well. 
So a lot of these new leaves have adopted sort of a convex configuration. Okay, it's day 74, and I know it's really hard to see in this camera, but there's still uh, plenty of water in this plant spa tray. So I did some really heavy watering the day before I filled up that plant spa tray, and I was kind of worried that I'd overwater again. But everything seems to be responding pretty well and the top of the soil is already starting to dry and you know I'm inexperienced with this whole plant spa concept so I'm not sure how well that'll work but unlike in my ginger germination experiment you know these honeydew plants are well established their roots grow you know far and deep pretty quickly so I wouldn't be surprised if everything did really well despite a dry soil surface so the important thing is that I'm seeing continual new growth. The important thing here, the important thing here is that I'm seeing continual new growth. So here's a second tendril for this one plant. It has that tendril that I recorded footage of uh, it whipping around the other night and basically it sort of formed a coil. It can't really find a substrate to bind to but it seems to still have some activity. And here's another plant uh, from this angle, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see a tendril kind of falling down their limb. But if you go up, you can see a new one. Likewise with this most well-developed plant, you can see this tendril just kind of hanging limp after I last did a heavy watering. So I know it's really hard to see here, but the water level goes basically down to the, the cusp of the lip, so to speak, inside. It's day 75, by the way. Yeah, so you can see it a little bit there. Most of the mature plants now have second tendrils that are looking for something to bind onto. And they probably won't succeed unless this pocket's very dense with plant growth. So this most robust plant has a cotyledon that's sort of dying at the edges. Otherwise, it's still mostly healthy. And at the other end, this other cotyledon is like 99% healthy too. So I don't think there are going to be any problems soon but I just like to monitor plant health to make sure everything's okay.